Our much-anticipated journey to Osaka took an unexpected turn when we encountered a nearly four-hour delay with Cebu Pacific. Oh my God! Before we arrived at the airport with excitement, eager to start our adventure, but we met via SMS with disheartening news that our flight had been delayed. Yeah. It wasn't disheartening, it was frustrating! And this was from a kid's perspective because some kids are impatient, like me! Uh-oh. Offering with reasons like due to aircraft maintenance which left us feeling uncertain and frustrated. Oh, For me, no. really frustrating. I understand that they have those maintenance things and all that stuff that I'm too young to understand but kind of understand because yes but since mama is stingy 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 since mama is stingy and they are the cheapest kind of airline hello says Air Asia so we are gonna continue to fly with them whichever the cheapest and best destination after several hours and restless activities later we were finally called to board Finally. Finally. Finally, I could not take one more minute in that waiting room. The boarding process, though smooth, was accompanied by a sense of fatigue and impatience that had accumulated over the wait. Especially impatience and fatigue. The delay had disrupted our plans and left us feeling behind schedule, but we were relieved to be moving forward. We settled into our seats. The in-flight entertainment is to make yourself entertained by your own and refreshments. You find to have a nap, and then when you wake up, you're already refreshed. We bought our favorite snack, Jamaican Patty and Jollibee. Jollibee, baka naman! Touchdown, Katsai Airport. Arrived at 10 p.m. It was supposed to be 7 p.m., but since the delay, which I was very frustrated about, <laughs> Katsai Airport, or kicks, not the kicks that you do with your leg, is distinct from many other airports due to several unique features and characteristics that set it apart. One of the most striking features of Kansai International Airport is its location on an artificial island in Osaka Bay. This design was chosen to address the constraints of land availability in the densely populated Kansai region. The construction of Kansai International Airport was a significant technological and historical milestone. As one of the world's first major airports built on an artificial island, Kix represents a landmark achievement in civil engineering. I thought Mama helped with this, but I don't think so. Its continued innovation and adaptation to changing aviation demands underscore its unique role in the global airport landscape. Given Japan's vulnerability to earthquakes, Kansai International Airport was designed with advanced seismic safety measures. The airport structures incorporate earthquake-resistant technology, including base isolators that help absorb and dissipate seismic energy. The airport serves as a major hub for both international and domestic flights, with efficient transportation links to cities like Osaka, Kyoto, and Kobe. After an exhausting delayed flight, arriving at a tatami-style hotel feels like a serene escape from the chaos of travel. The soft ambient lighting and gentle sight of traditional Japanese pacify immediately soothe your frayed nerves. The check-in process is smooth and welcoming, with the staff offering warm smiles. I wanted hot chocolate, but fine, I guess warm smiles do count as well, which helps to rejuvenate after the long journey. Another day, another nickel! Japan is really living in 2050, not 15, 50. Walking into a hotel lobby and being greeted by a friendly robot assistant, ready to cater to your every need. This is not a scene from a sci-fi movie. Hi, don't touch me. It's the reality of modern hospitality, but just imagine when this robot becomes angry and turns on all the humans. Yeah, it's not a pretty picture. This hotel turning to robotic assistance to enhance the guest experience and streamline operations. The staff, not the robot, staff offered us free sweets for us to munch in. Being mama loves anything free. Mama is just being funny as always. Then we just grabbed some. Then without delay, we headed to our meal of the day. The Konbini store or the convenience store. In the land of the rising Sun, convenience stores or konbini as they're affectionately called. Are more than just a place to grab a quick snack or drink. They are cultural institutions that embody the Japanese viewpoint of service and efficiency. With over 50,000 konbini scattered across Japan, they are a ubiquitous presence. I don't know what that means. 
offering a window into the daily life and needs of the Japanese people and foreigners that need a quick fix to their meal. Wow. Japanese konbini is a marvel. Avengers! Assemble. Not Avengers, okay? Of modern retail. Open 24-7, they provide a range of services that go beyond the scope of their Western counterparts. From ATMs, and they have better rates than any Kirk Seed. And they have a better rate and they have better rates than any currency exchange to packed meals, concert tickets to utility bill payments, Konbini are a one-stop shop for daily necessities and more. The major players in the market, such as 7-Eleven, yeah! Family Mart, Woo! and Lawson, are constantly innovating, ensuring that the Konbini experience is always fresh and exciting. We came back to our hotel to be seated and eat our first meal. Since we came in the middle of the night last night, we didn't secure to buy a SIM card in the airport. I, uh... Mama thought it was easy to just buy a SIM from any konbini, but she was wrong! This konbini... Th the, the, this konbini don't sell... At <laughs> This konbini don't sell SIM cards. So while eating, Mama took the chance to search where to buy next. And now we're heading to the nearest Don Quixote, aka Donkey. Don, don, donkey, donkey. That's right. Now I'm a flying talking donkey. Not the donkey from Shrek, but you already know that. So, but no luck. No SIM card. But Mama bought me a shirt so I can wear tomorrow at Universal Studio Japan. So stay tuned to that. Then we went to the convenience store in the same building, Family Mart. Fortunately, there was a SIM card there. Yippee! So Mama already activated it. And now we can go anywhere. Off we go to the next destination. Oh, before that, your ticket to convenience to travel via train is IC card. Getting your hands on an uh, Getting your hands on an Ikoka card is straightforward. Vending machines at JR stations in Osaka, equipped with English language guidance. Try saying that five times. English language, English, I can't do it. Are ready to dispense these cards to eager explorers. Recharging the card is just as easy, ensuring that you're always prepared for your next journey. The Ikoka card is the local prepaid card for the Kansai region, which includes Osaka. This rechargeable card is your gateway to a hassle-free travel experience across various modes of transportation, including trains, subways, and buses. With a simple tap, you can glide through the city, not literally, avoiding the need to purchase individual tickets or fumble for change. The Ikoka card is not just limited to transportation. It's a versatile tool that can be used for purchases at convenience stores vending machines, and even some restaurants. The card contains 2,000 yen, which includes 1,500 in preloaded value and a 500 yen deposit. The deposit is refundable upon returning the card, minus a 220 dot. I was about to say dollars. Avoiding the need to pr Nope, I already said that. It is compatible with other IC cards like Pasmo and Suica. This means that the Ikoka card can be used in other parts of Japan, making it an indispensable travel companion for those planning to explore beyond Osaka. 